Poke, pokey, poke. It's a seafood dish that's a staple in Hawaii and it's getting popular here in the mainland. Today, I'm gonna show you three ways to make it. The original shoyu, spicy poke, and kimchi poke. I'm gonna go over the basics first and then build upon them to create more interesting flavors. So how do you pronounce poke? I've learned that it's po-ke and rhymes with okay. Snap me at Honeysuckle Bee to tell me how you say it and be sure to check out my Instagram at Honeysuckle Catering. All right, so let's start with our first version, the shoyu poke. In a large bowl, I'm combining one pound of fresh ahi tuna steaks that I cut into one inch chunks against the grain. I always try to look for wild caught ahi tuna because it's sustainable and doesn't have any of that unnatural stuff in farm raised fish. When choosing fish, consider three of these things since we're consuming it raw. Smell. Fresh fish should have a light smell to almost no smell at all. Color. Fresh tuna should have a nice crimson color. And then texture. It should be firm to the touch. Be sure to ask your fishmonger if you have any questions at all. Next, I'll combine a quarter cup of soy sauce, one tablespoon of sesame oil, one teaspoon of freshly grated ginger that I've pounded in my mortar and pestle, half a sweet Maui onion that I've chopped up, one stalk of green onion, chopped, sea salt to taste, and a little bit of togarashi, which is Japanese chili powder. If you can't find this at the store, you can always substitute with cayenne pepper. I'll mix it lightly, then let it marinate in the fridge for at least two hours before serving. Wasn't that easy? Now, we'll just use the shoyu poke and build upon it to make the spicy poke. In a small bowl, I'm adding half a cup of mayo. I'm using this Japanese mayo called kupai. Kupai is a smoother, creamier mayonnaise that uses rice vinegar instead of white vinegar like traditional mayonnaise here. Have you ever tried it? Next, I'll add in one tablespoon of sriracha. Feel free to adjust if you don't like it too spicy and I'll add in two teaspoons of tobiko, which is flying fish roe. I like it because it adds a poppy crunch. I'll mix it well, then I'll add it to the shoyu poke and give it a light toss until the fish is coated. I like to sprinkle a little bit more of the tobiko on top for extra color. I'll let it marinate in the fridge for two hours and then enjoy. Last but not least, our kimchi poke. This one is quite simple and I recommend already having kimchi on hand. I'm using shoyu poke as a base here again, and in a small bowl, I'll combine one tablespoon of oyster sauce, one tablespoon of honey, and I'll mix it well. Next, I'm taking a quarter cup of kimchi that I made, and I'll chop it into small pieces. You can find my kimchi recipe in the link below. I'll add it to the oyster sauce mixture along with one tablespoon of the kimchi juice, and I'll mix it well. Now, I'll lightly toss it with the shoyu ahi poke and let it marinate for another two hours and enjoy. For each of these recipes, the marinating time is only two hours, not four. Each one tastes so unique. The shoyu poke is the most simple of them all, but it's really tasty. The spicy poke is creamy and has the perfect amount of spiciness. And the tobiko gives it a little bit of texture that's so interesting. Finally, the kimchi poke. I love kimchi, so this recipe was a no-brainer for me. And it's so delicious paired with rice. Like a poke bowl. If you like poke bowls and want me to show you a recipe on it, comment below or give me a thumbs up. When I went to Maui this past summer for my honeymoon, I went to Foodland almost every day to try their pokes. They had shoyu, spicy California roll, wasabi, limu, everything under the sun. I like to pair it with taro chips that was so good. What interesting combinations would you try now that you know how to make poke? Be sure to tag me on your photos if you make them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye or aloha.